What is up you guys, Captain Jack here. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also like this video, it helps push it out there, helps get it known. I am sitting here at my house, kind of quarantining, super bored. So I kind of was thinking about an awesome diving adventure I had, and it was last summer. I went to the Abacos, this was pre-Dorian, and I was there for about a week, and on the last day I had just the one of the most incredible dive, like diving days uh, of my life. So. Without further ado, I'll go ahead and walk you through the videos, walk you through the whole experience, and I hope you guys enjoy and take something from it. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and uh, drop them down below. Like I said, enjoy. This is our last day, well my last day here at the Avocos. We are gearing up, ready to head off. Fingers crossed, hopefully we get a big one today. Hey Damon, what happens? Whoever gets the biggest fish, what, uh, what do they have to do? Somebody left their cap on the boat. So, Go winner. You won't mind. Yeah, winner of the uh, biggest fish contest has to, has to wear that and take a picture with it. And that'll probably be Dean. Oh, the. Uh, Sponsored by Doritos. The ladies' cap? Yeah. The real skipper. So this day starts off great. We go to the first spot, we're in about 70 feet of water. I toss my little throw flasher, it sinks all the way to the bottom, and at first I see no fish come into it. I finally got down to the bottom, and right there, out of the corner of my eye, I was able to see a mutton. It was pretty far off in the distance, so I went ahead and got situated down there. As it, Right there, you see him again. I go ahead and start grunting. I start tapping the flasher down on the reef. I move a little bit to close the gap, and he was able to give me a shot. Due to the fact that we're in the Bahamas, we have to use these primitive pole spears and there's no sense in taking far shots so you have to be a much better hunter and make sure you're close enough to get a good shot because if you don't, most likely the fish will rip off and you're less likely to land as many fish. This next spot we were diving was a little shallower, it was probably about 30 to 40 feet deep and this dog snapper literally just came cruising by and gave me the easiest shot and this is probably one of my best dog snapper that I've shot to this day. Hey, hey, just pull him out. Just pull him off the, pull him off. What's that? Pulled him off. Huge, this next spot we're in, we're in about 75 feet of water. There's a crack in the middle of nowhere. Dean makes an awesome drop on a yellowfin grouper. And we had no idea how big this cave was until he shot this fish and his pole spear literally disappears into the darkness in the cave.
The setup we had was the backs of our pole spears were attached to a belt reel and on the way up Dean's belt reel for some reason got jammed but luckily I was seeing it kind of struggling and I dropped down and detached his weight belt which was able to free him to go to the surface. My advice is to not hesitate dropping your weight belt at all because you can always get in on a later dive. That real sucks. Sorry, we'll get it. So I went to kind of assess the situation from the hole that Dean initially shot the fish at, and there was no way I could even see his pole spear. I started having a little tug of war match with what I thought was the grouper, but I sat there and analyzed it and realized I was just pulling and stretching out the bungee that the belt reel is attached to on the end of the pole spear. So that fish is probably 30 feet up inside of there. You know the thing that you were pulling it was pulling back? Yeah. It was the, the roller. The roller. Uh, I started pulling. I couldn't get I couldn't get in there, man. Fuck. There was another hole on the other side of where he shot it, and it was kind of guarded by a moray eel. You can see to the left right there. But I'm able to squeeze by it and get way up in there, and I'm able to see and find the fish and get him out successfully without that moray eel taking a little bite out of me. Yeah, that fish is about 15 feet in there, and I have to wedge myself and he's pretty gassed and I'm able to get the fish and pull him on out. Oh. I had to go so far up in there to get that. Yeah, dude, nice job. Fuck. Nice freaking job. That was scary. You were gone. I know it was. For a while. Dude, Dean shot another yellow fin. This next spot we went to was freaking loaded with life. It was a giant rock pile out in the middle of nowhere. There were a bunch of caves and we had no idea how they were laid out. 
There were grouper, yellow jack, snapper, just everywhere. And we followed this big black, and he rocked up in this hole, and Dean made a drop on it. So what you saw there was Dean making a good shot on this black and the entire nine foot pole spear got sucked into the reef and it snapped the band that was attached to his belt reel. So unfortunately, you know, the fish started just dragging his pole spear nine footer around the whole reef. It finally hooked up on the reef, tore out and the fish rocked up in another cave. So this is me prepping to do a dive. I'm going to go down there and extract the fish. And mind you, it's about 70 feet deep. I know he's badly injured. I know he's super deep in this cave. And if there's only one chance I'm going to have at getting him, it's going to be on this dive. I know I'm going to have to make a lethal pole spear shot because he is so far up in there if something bad goes wrong i'm gonna be in big big trouble but i go pretty far up in there and it gets a little sketchy if you're a little claustrophobic i might look away I landed a perfect spine shot and he was completely demobilized. Now was the tough part of getting myself unwedged from those rocks because it was about a foot clearance. Need to get up out of there with that nine foot pole spear and I end up being able to do it. And now getting a feet like this is just something that doesn't happen very often so it's not necessarily the size of the fish that got me so pumped up but it's just the fact that it was just such an incredible shot and incredible situation and it couldn't have worked out any better Woo, baby! Woo yeah boy Woo! Woo! that was the only way I could get him out of there, man. Oh, holy shit. Lights out. I, I had to stone him. I was like, dude, he's so far back in there. Man. Whoa. I get worried. You disappeared for a long time. Oh, I was so far up in there, and he was looking right at me. I was like, I stoned him, or that's, that's it. <laughs> Didn't move a muscle. Just slid him right out of there. He was looking at me like this. Woohoo! Oh my god. That could have gone any better. You're like Holy You want to hang out here a little bit? Dude, there's uh there's more fruit for stuff for hanging out over there. Pull out. Yeah. I just gotta lift that thing over my hand. There we go. Woo! Dude, nice job, good teamwork. Teamwork makes it. Oh. It was no easy. Spined his ass. What? Alright, guys, so we just got in and had an awesome last day over here at the Abacos. And last dive for me ended up diving deep in it for a grouper and it was pretty incredible what you got there jack well, we got a doggy and a groupie we got all kinds of goods don't hurt your back i know i know 
<laughs> right, should I stand up on the bar? 